What's going on, Game Leapers? Here we go, mate. The tier list for 13.7. That isn't going to do anything for your rank, but it will do something for your pseudo knowledge about the game. But just before we do get into the video, one thing you guys have to do before you get into your next game is to download the Paul Professor app linked in the description because it allows you to quickly import the best room page used from the best players in the world on the champion you're picking. You don't have to make the room page, just one click of a button and bang, you're ready to go. But that's not all because the app also allows you you to scout your opponent and the app will give you their stats how well they play their champion so you can know more about your opponent than they know about themselves and the app also gives you an in-game overlay so you can compare your cs and your kill participation to your rank or even challenger players like faker and there's a reason why 3 million people have downloaded this free application guys it's because it works so get around it in season 13 those links are in the description but anyway guys the tier list let's start by talking about the best top laners and the worst top laners according to our tier list so in broken we have Fiora, Jax, Malphite, and Riven. Now, I don't really have to go into too much detail here. Riven has actually moved up into Broken tier because of the Eclipse build. Malphite is here because of the recent buffs. Jax because he's Season 13 Jax. And Fiora because, well, yeah, it's Season 13 Fiora as well. Bit more tank scene in the top lane. And Fiora has so many winning matchups. She's classified as an S plus tier champion in pretty much every single elo as well. Now, as far as champions who actually got changed in 13.7 or who will get changed, well, we have Graves who's staying in BT. Yes, you're getting a bit more crit bonus and your ultimate cooldown is going down, but it doesn't really change too much. So yeah, just a B tier kind of standard top laner. But maybe a champion a bit more significant in the top lane. Olaf is getting nerfed. So as far as your passive attack speed goes, so the lower you are, the more attack speed you get. This is going down in the early game. And also your Q's damage, the base damage is down by five. And because you're maxing this first, this will definitely mean something for your laning phase, okay? So Olaf won't win as many lanes, but he will still be very strong. That's why he's an S tier. Now Sejuani is getting nerfed as far as her Q cooldown increasing and her ultimate's cooldown also increasing. But she'll still be kind of an okay top laner. She's remaining in B tier. We also have Wukong who's dropping down to B tier because your early game's kind of getting hit here big time as far as your base attack damage goes down by two and your W's cooldown is going up at later ranks doesn't really mean too much but your E's bonus attack speed so when you E in and you get that bonus attack speed this is nerfed by 5% at each rank which means your Conqueror stacking your DPS everything is just down here this will affect Wukong quite a lot in the top lane you really just want to be picking him if you're counter picking a champion specifically and that's the same for Lee Sin as well that's why he's dropped to C tier from B tier because exactly the same nerfs here base attack damage is down by two and your base armor is also down and guess what on the top lane most of the time you're going to be versing attack damage champions so Lee Sin is worse off now apart from this what else is getting changed well Abyssal Mask you're getting more HP so if you are a champion building Abyssal Mask or one of those tank top laners you're going to be enjoying this a bit more doesn't really affect the tier list though and Death's Dance is getting well well I think buffed because you're getting ability haste again from the item so if you're playing something like a Ribbon a Fiora a Camille these bruisers they actually really appreciate ability haste so I think this is really good for a lot of bruiser top laners and yeah Ribbon and Fiora are just going to be cemented in S plus tier even more because of this. And maybe the final champion guys to talk about here is Yasuo because his E is now going to go up to four stacks and the shield from your passive is actually higher. I think this will just be a better pass for Yasuo in the top lane. I still don't think he's that great in this lane. I think you're much better off picking him in the mid lane, but hey, this will help quite a lot. That's why he's moving up a tier. And if you guys have any thoughts on this top lane tier, let us know by dropping a comment down below, mate. Now moving into the other solo lane, the mid lane here, and you can see, speaking of Yasuo, he's in broken tier because of the buffs. Next to him, we have Talon, the buffs from last patch if you look at this guy's stats by the way in challenger it's like 56 percent win rate hardcore s plus tier champion we have annie despite her getting nerfed oh my god how does that work well she's getting nerfed for her support version right so the e max annie playing support doesn't really affect mid lane you're still maxing your q you're still going to be you know you still have all the same strengths is what i'm saying your e getting nerfed doesn't mean anything for mid lane annie and then we have akshan because he's just dominating every single rank he's been so strong for pretty much the entirety of season 13 and maybe even more so now because fighting you know it's a lot of close range and that's what akshan likes if he gets out range is kind of difficult to play this champion of course in the mid lane in a 1v1 you have a gap closer right but against lots of team comps range does kind of cuck you with engage on your side so especially if your supports roaming mid and those team fights there's more close range action right Akshan really enjoys this so I guess the meta just suits him right now that's why he's in broken tier now champion's actually getting changed in 13.7 we do have Azir and guys honestly like I don't care what happens to this champion I'm just going to put him in Azir tier because that is his tier I guess but also yeah I don't know if these changes like W maxing okay your base armor going up is nice but are they really going to mean his win rate is going to be like even respectable I'm not sure now one champion whose win rate will definitely be respectable is Katarina's because of the Nash's tooth nerf for her yes it got changed but it was just a straight up nerf for Katarina because it's an extra 200 gold you're waiting on that spy for longer and you don't care about ability has but what you are getting this patch will are some compensation buffs your passive AP ratio is going up by 5% so if you're building AP from Rocket Bell Nash's may be right you're getting more out of your passive when you pick those daggers up 
and also your ultimate is just going to be dealing more damage based off your bonus attack damage so both builds here for cat are getting buffed that's why she's in low key broken but i think we kind of all know that she's going to be pretty good because of these changes now graves unmoved exactly like top lane he's going to be staying in the b tier list for mid lane yes we already talked about him moving up all the way to broken tier now what other champions well the only other champion here really is vagar getting nerfed so your q's ap ratio is now going to scale from 45 percent to 65 percent and this is changing from a flat 60 percent so at rank 5 or level 9 you will be getting more out of the q but until that point, it's going to be weaker, right? So as far as like, you know, lasting minions go, as far as, you know, damaging the enemy champion goes, this is just going to be weaker. That's the same for your W's AP ratio as well. Instead of being a flat 100%, it's getting from 70 to 110%. So at level 13 or five points in your W, it will deal more damage, but getting to that point will be harder. Also, your ultimate AP ratio, same treatment, 75% flat to a scaling 65 to 75%. So it will be the same at level 16. But again, guys, it's going to be harder to hit these actual points on Vega. So mid lane, which is actually just his weakest role, it's going to be more difficult. There are a lot harder matchups in the mid lane. So I'd only be picking Vega to cuck kind of close range champions and close range teams because of your event horizon. That's pretty much it for the mid lane, guys. As far as like low key broken champions go, we can get into these in a future video. So if you do want that, yeah, leave a comment, like this video. And yeah, moving into the jungle role for 13.7, the broken tier, well, three of these are unchanged. Echo, Evelyn, and J4. These are not getting nerfed. And I'm really surprised J4 is not getting nerfed because he's by far just the standout jungler at the moment and yeah Belveth has actually moved up a tier because it's Belveth I guess. Belveth definitely deserves her spot here because well according to the stats anyway she is incredibly powerful right now. With a lot more engage in the game she loves those close range team fights and she's really just frothing it. Now as far as jungler is getting changed in 13.7 Graves again this champion is going to stay in the tier because I don't think the buffs are significant enough to move him up so he's staying in A tier. Now what about other champions? Well Ramus is getting nerfed your W's percentage bonus armor is going down that's why Ram Ram has dropped down to A tier. He'll still be good, especially in the majority of elos. So if you see a lot of attack damage on the enemy team, just lock in the armadillo. Now we have Olaf, kind of like the top lane nerf, right? This is why Olaf is going down to C tier. Less attack speed from your passive, less Q damage. That will also affect your clear as well, remember. Then we have Sejuani. So the actual damage to monsters, going down. Your Q's cooldown and ultimate cooldown going up. This affects you as well, but not really that big. And that's why she's dropping down to B tier from A tier. Uh, Wukong, we talked about these. Lee Sin, we talked about these nerfs. So Wukong is going down to A tier. Lee Sin, exactly the same. Both of these are down from S tier into A tier. Now, are there any other junglers? Well, there is one big change here. This is to Karzix. Now, in yesterday's video, I kind of like actually like misread this. I'll hold my hand up. Like I went full oceanic mode here and I actually treated this like, oh, the actual range of your Q is going down for some reason. But the ISO range is going down, which means the enemy champion being isolated from something is actually smaller now. They don't actually have to be further away from that minion or jungle monster, whatever it is. They can be closer to it and you still get the isolation. So this means that radius is actually smaller and you get more opportunities to isolate them and and therefore deal damage. The W slow going down honestly doesn't mean too much. Like it's still going to slow them enough for you to catch up to them, especially if you go like grudge or something later in your build. And then your ultimate duration going up as well. I actually think these are buffs. Like seriously, after reading these again and actually, yeah, turning off my oceanic brain and turning on my EU Westbourne brain, this actually just looks really good for Kha'Zix. Maybe some Kha'Zix maybe would be happy with like your W getting changed and all that. But yeah, I actually think this is good for Kha'Zix. Just make sure you guys aren't playing as their jungle, obviously, and Twitch jungle. I think this is a massive bait play. as an AD carry and moving on to the AD carry tier list. Look where the Playground is he is in broken tier alongside Zyra and Jinx. These three AD carries, like you should be picking them in pretty much every single game. They are the standouts. Now below them we have Draven, Nyla, Vagar. Vagar is here despite getting nerfed because he's still gonna be good enough as an AP carry in the bot lane. This is by far his best role, guys. Statistically, it's a lot easier to get out of the bot lane, especially with a support next to you. And because the bot lane at the moment is very close range, you cuck a lot of champions, especially even AD carries who can't, you know, like dash out of it. So if you're against an Ezreal, it might be annoying, a Lucian might be annoying, right? A Vayne might be annoying but if you're against a jinx a draven a Zyre, you can just drop that e around them and they can't move right so it's pretty annoying to play against and vega will still be good despite the nerfs now in loki broken we have kaiser Callista, who's getting buffs so your attack damage growth going up and maybe like the oathsworn bond you know actual like time it takes to do that going down for your attack damage going up at later ranks this is definitely nice so she's in loki broken and given the support meta i actually think she'll be a really underrated pick then we have yasuo because of the changes maybe an e max yasuo in the bot lane with like a nautilus or alice's support is getting buffed and we'll talk about him very soon i think this 
this would be quite deadly. And the rest of the tier list, guys, is very similar to what it was in the last tier list. Now, the last role to talk about, guys, of course, is the support role. And if you have enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like down below. And yes, the support for 13.7. Now, there are none in low key broken because not really many of them are getting changed. All right, Thresh is getting nerfed, but you will still have your death sentence up an awful lot. That's why he's in S tier. And as far as Alistair goes, because of the base armor buff, he's going up to A tier. And yeah, yes, the base health going up as well really helps him in that early laning phase. He's going to be much more oppressive and just more dangerous. Just make sure you're taking Glacial Augment with Hex Flash. I think it's definitely the best way to play this champion. Now, as far as broken champions go, very similar to last patch, except that Annie is going down because of the support nerfs to Annie, right? So if you're E maxing Annie, it will be worse off, but it will probably still be the way to go for support Annie. But yeah, in broken, Blitzcrank, Nautilus, Rakan, Center, these champions have been buffed recently. They are the cream of the crop as far as supports go. If you are playing support, please have these champions in your champion pool. And yeah, apart from that, guys, there isn't really much changing for supports, so the tier list is staying largely the same. Any questions you have about the tier list, drop a comment down below. You can even have a rant about the patch or the balance team being so good. But yeah, I will see you in tomorrow's season 13 upload, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. This has been a... Peace.